So Stephen, um, your new book, Method, tell us about it. Uh, Method essentially is a collection of close-up mentalism, stuff that I used in my walk around sets at bars, nightclubs, restaurants. Um, any stuff com- from your, like your repertoire? Yeah, your stuff repertoire. that's all been used in the real world and um, I've been using it mostly for about four or five years now. A lot of the material I either kind of wanted to get out there because I feel like I wanted to put my name and sort of time stamp it on it. Um, when I first started doing close-up mentalism, I, I struggled to find material that I either liked or um, that I felt was particularly real world or relevant. Um, a lot of it was kind of old school and dated. So what I tried to do was take a lot of the classic principles and mesh them together, combine them and uh, create a lot of close-up pieces. And that's, that's what method consists of. So consistent. you call yourself a thought reader? Yes. Instead of a mind reader? Yes. Do you, what do you think of like the term, you know, mentalist? Do you consider yourself a mentalist or, or a um, mind reader? I think it's kind of a grey area. I mean, you know, as performers, we all know, you know, we, we all know we're kind of talking about the same thing. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, obviously here in the UK, mentalist has kind of a um, a bad connotation after, you know, the, the comedy TV show it was on. Yeah. Um, but I, the reason I didn't go with mind reader was because pretty much I, I didn't want to get into that confrontational situation where, obviously, if you're a gig or something like that, somebody says, okay, read my mind, tell me what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with the thought reader, it's kind of like you, you control the performance conditions and you control the situation if you like a little bit more and that, sure. that's what I found from my experience so that's why I went with thought reader you, rather than mind reader. Do you think that do you think that kind of detaches yourself from you know like um, magicians don't like being called magicians? Yeah. Because there's, there's, there's so many stigmas attached to it. Do you think that does the same thing for you as a mind reader? Like if you say to somebody I'm a mind reader they're, they're already going to have a preconception of it. I mean, does that help change that? Is that what you kind of go for? Yeah, I think so. I think, like I say, I mean, if you say you're a mind reader, um, it's very much um, kind of you've got that initial wall that you've got to try and get over with people the same way that with a lot of close-up magicians will have where, you know, there's, there's a lot of preconceptions about what, what you're about to do. And obviously, you have to kind of break that down and build a wall with people, and that can be difficult sometimes. So. Yeah. That's kind of what, why I went with the thought reader angle as opposed to you know the traditional mentalist where people don't know what it is and it sounds a bit it can sound a bit random in my opinion um, or mind reader for you know the reasons like I said so yeah I mean I, I've been out with you a few times and seen you perform and it's definitely I definitely want to want to look at you and think you're a, you know when you're performing I want to look at you and think oh he's a magician or he's a mind reader or he's a performer because you've got a way of making it kind of it feels like a real thing that's happening rather than mm. you know trickery rather than deception okay and um I've, I've read a few a few of the bits in here but um, i pick up that's what you've kind of just you've put yourself into this book, book basically your style of yeah making it as real as possible so i quite like the the idea of you being seen as a thought reader because it kind of separates itself in a way from standard mentalism stuff mm. some of the tricks in here are just you know uh, it feels wrong to even call them tricks because they, they do they do come across as a uh, Do you get where I'm going? They yeah, yeah, the real yeah. Well, you, put that in there, you, know? you know, like kind of the way I created a lot of the material in there is to start with the end result and think, okay, what's the effect that I want, and then try and keep it as clear line back through the method. So, you know, try and keep it as clear and direct as if. Uh, like a straight line that I was performing it to somebody then the method should be as straight line as possible so basically everything in the book will use standard props you know um, I say props standard items business cards shopping markers playing cards um, your, you know your wristwatch things like that standard items that you know that you it's not a strange item to bring into a performance you know and yeah. I think within the the mentalism kind of aspects a lot of the material out there in my opinion can look a little bit Proppy, like I'm not a fan of ESP cards, and that that's just doesn't suit my style. But I think, you know, it's harder to sell that kind of thing to, uh, to you know, in a performance aspect. Yeah. But you know, everything in there is just standard items. I don't think this is, there isn't actually a single item in there where you need to buy anything that you probably don't already own or oh, have okay, around so. the house. So, yeah. um, the playing card items are in there, and they are uh, very sort of mind reader based. Uh, or thought reader based if you like yeah. um, there isn't really any difficult sleight of hand in the book I prefer subtlety over technique yeah. uh, so I mean this isn't a book for beginners by any means but at the same time um, I was just gonna ask that because like when it's a sleight of hand thing mm-hmm. you can you can judge it by difficulty and you can tell people how difficult it is but this sure. is a completely different kind of ball game so I mean would, would you 
if a beginner got hold of this book, would they know kind of? Yeah, I think so. And the reason I say that is because um, a lot of the feedback I've had from yourself and other people I gave early editions to said how uh, clear the writing is and the methods were, etc. So although there isn't any difficult sleight of hand in there, uh, it doesn't mean to say it's like thought mentalism for beginners or thought reading for beginners by any means. Yeah. But it just means that somebody who's maybe been interested in you know the the, the area for a while could pick that up and after sure. you know they could you know in a relevant amount of time be able to perform the routines quite easily. So w without you giving away too much about a book, um, what kind of things can people expect to kind of get from this? And learn from this? Well, there's a lot of varied material in there. Um, a lot of it is sort of my approach to classic plots, such as Spectator's Mind Reader. Uh, there's my approach to cold reading with like a guaranteed outcome, which I used for a long time while I was getting used to doing readings in close-up situations, and that I knew that I would have um, like a guaranteed moment of, sure. of awe as well. Um, there's some very direct thought reading with playing cards. Um, it's very hands-off, very spectator-driven. Uh, for example, in there there was a, a routine in there that's very fooling. Uh, it's fooled a lot of magicians actually, although that's never been my my goal by any means. But essentially, a uh, spectator riffle shuffles a deck of cards, they take off a chunk, they spread through, they look at any one, they just think of it, and you're able to tell them which card they're thinking of, and it, it's not a marked deck. There's no uh, instant stooging or anything like that. Sure. Um, there's a nice watch force in there, which is uh, in the routine. There's a time for lying which you could uh, use in various other routines. Um, a big problem that I found was I never really liked borrowing other people's watches. Yeah. Uh, I always felt like it was a personal item and sure, yeah. you hear a few horror stories about you know, performers who've <laughs> borrowed watches yeah. and you know it's broken or whatever. So, um, there's, And there's a few, I think the people who read between the lines in this, you're going to see that there's a lot of material in there that you could either take uh, a bit from this or a bit from that or a way to get a peek on this move or whatever and probably use them in routines that you, you already do, you're already doing. Sure, yeah. um, there's my approach to a witch hand routine in there with just the standard business cards. Uh, there's a drawing duplication in there. Um, you know, so it's all fairly common plots within yeah. the mentalism background but it's all been adapted so it's very easy, it's very direct and it's direct for close-up as well. So. so you've got some decent kind of testimonials, forward introduction. Peter Turner and Luke Jamet. Yeah, I was very lucky. Um, I mean, they're two people I look up to massively within the industry, uh, especially Luke. Luke's early works were very much what uh, kind of inspired my thinking towards the material in the book. Uh, and obviously, Pete, some of Pete's thinking was very revolutionary as well. So I kind of sent the book off to him, and um, I wasn't sure whether I'd get a response, to be honest, or whether they'd like it. You know, it was kind of a nervous moment for it, but. You know, I know Pete's adapted some of the ideas into some of his work, and uh, Luke seemed to like the book as well. He was very complimentary about it. So, yeah, it's a real honour to have those guys uh, involved in the book. So, this is your first book with Illusionist Method by Stephen Palmer, available right now at illusionist.com.